Even people in their in their early to mid twenties begin to lose their bone through here, and wow. it's amazing. Somebody who's in their like well, late twenties, okay, and then you look at them and you say, well, "You're late twenties with another person." They go, "You're early twenties." If you just simply inject a little bit of filler right here and widen that cheekbone again, all of a sudden you can't tell that the person's late twenties. Subtle little thing. Next slide. Okay, and this is another example. Um, this woman is in her thirties again. Here's the before, and just simply by filling in. All of a sudden, she looks robust, right? She looks, has this vitality, okay? And just has this youthfulness. So, what is normal aging, okay? Normal aging is going from a grape to a raisin. <laughs> we simply lose our volume, okay? We go from an inflated balloon to a deflated balloon. So that's us. All right, as we all age. Next slide. Okay. So the question is, when should skincare start, okay? And the actual time to start skincare is with children or early teens, because the sunlight is causing problems. Most of us get 80% of our lifetime sun in our first 18 years of life. So if we can reduce that amount of sunlight that you're getting those first 18 years, we are going to be helping you over your entire lifetime with less skin aging, okay? Less skin cancer, overall just better skin. The other thing we try to do with people who are in their childhood and teen years is work on their acne, okay? Um, a lot of kids get acne when they're 11, 12, 13, and parents don't often think about taking their kids in to get their acne treated until it just looks bad at age 14. And by that time, they've already got a bunch of scars. So you can be looking at children in terms of scar reduction, okay? Uh, acne reduction, reducing their scar then you're going to be enhancing their age a lot. So again, we want to start treatment for acne early, emphasize sunscreen, and this is just an example of sun damage that's occurred in a young person. Okay, you look at them and you say, no, their face looks great. But you do the ultraviolet pictures and lo and behold, all this freckling that's underneath the skin is all age spots. Okay, so what happens in age 21 to 30? More work now, less work later, okay? Your skin is still young. We want you to focus on prevention, okay? And we want you to focus again on wearing sunscreen. We want to get you started on an antioxidant and a retinol. Okay, those are great products to keep your skin healthy and keep your skin from falling apart. And you think it's a good idea at this age to start getting light peels because that's a way of rejuvenating the skin, enhancing the collagen production. I want you to keep your acne under control, okay? And if you have acne scars, it's actually better to start treating them early because for some reason scars tend to get a little bit worse over time, okay? And if you can get the scars treated in your 20s, you're going to have a lot, a lot less scarring that's noticeable when you're in your 30s. Okay, next slide. Oh, can we go back a sec? So these are just, um, this is somebody who had a series of light peels, okay? And you can see the discoloration and such that she had. Um, early and the acne scars and how much smoother she is with just um, simple peels that have minimal downtime, just a little scaling and flaking for a couple of days. So it's a nice way to go. Um, this person I showed you in the previous pictures, he had what's called Dermapen, which is a tiny device that uses little micro needles, does micro needling of the skin. And that's a great way to stimulate collagen and treat acne scars in, in young people. And you can get great There's this on one. Scarring. Next slide. Yes. Um, I was wondering, if you have oily skin when you're younger, does that help with you get older? You know, it does, because people who have oily skin have more sebaceous glands in their skin, and sebaceous glands are kind of thick, and they keep the skin, uh, because they're thick, they keep the skin sort of stable, okay? So even if you're losing your collagen, like we all do as we age, these big oil glands are essentially holding the skin in place. So people who have this thick, porous skin, they tend, they get a lot more oil when they're young, but they tend to have a lot of less age-looking skin when they get older, okay? It's more of a trick of nature. It's not truly that their skin does better because it has more oil, because they have thicker oil. Okay. Um, and this, uh, this is a young woman, again, we're talking about 21 to 30, okay? And she just simply had treatments with um, HA fillers, okay, like we we're talking about, uh, the HA fillers being Restylane and Juvederm, okay, and those are the fillers that we put into the skin to enhance the, the skin. And in her case, again, she had a little bit of loss in this area, we filled her in, gave her a little bit of volume in her cheeks, okay, a little bit on her lips, and all of a sudden she's a new person, and this is someone who's in their 20s. Next slide. Okay. Uh, another another popular treatment in people in their age uh, less than 30 is lip filling. Okay. And you can take somebody who kind of had somewhat thin lips that didn't have a sense of, of um, 
body to the lips, okay? And it's amazing how, how you can make somebody's face look much more voluptuous and desirable when you simply fill her lips a little bit. And so she just simply had a couple of sessions of filler in her lips and she looks great. Next slide. Okay, 31 to 40. Now we're trying to keep what you got, okay? This is a struggle years. This is really when we try to encourage people to, hey, you really have, have are on the borderline here of losing things and we need to work to try and keep you good. So um, what starts happening, okay? Well, you start getting fine lines and wrinkles. This is when you begin to get some loss of volume, okay, in the face, uh, some of the after effects of pregnancy, some of the loss of elasticity. And again, if we can correct these things at early ages, really makes it easier as you get older, okay? The more correction we provide you early on, less of a problem you have at a later age. So we recommend sunscreens, anti-aging, um, people who are starting to get a little bit of a pooch, okay? This is a great time to get started on one of our fat reduction methods, okay? Cool sculpt or vanquish, we'll, talk, we'll be talking about those later. Um, esthetician for peels, fillers, Botox, again, great within, within this age group. And like I was saying, a lot of people look at their skin, they don't really think they need anything, but they are looking a little old, they're putting on a little more makeup, and, you know, somebody who might be single after marriage or whatever, and they're starting to look, you know, a little bit beyond their years or at their years, and they try to make themselves look 10 years younger, and we can do that. If you take care of yourself, it's a lot easier, but even if you're in your mid-30s, late-30s, we really have a good opportunity here to turn that clock back a little for you. So, okay, next slide. And these are just some things that we can do with fillers. Um, we're using fillers for all kinds of crazy things now. We, we do not only just the small wrinkles, but I was talking about before how we lift the cheeks, we smooth out entire foreheads, we really bring out your eyebrows. Um, my overall favorite place to do fillers, okay, not going to believe this, the earlobes. You put a little tiny drop of filler in women's earlobes, and they just look in the mirror and go, I've wanted this for so long. <laughs> and it's kind of a funny thing. It's like a disease people don't realize they have is losing the tissue in their earlobes. Yes? How often is the filler result? Kind of depends. We have fillers that last six months to a year. We have fillers that last one to three years. Okay. There's even long, long-term fillers now that are available. Those have some risk. We don't really use them because there's some problems, but they are available. People want them. So they are all different kinds of things. Okay. Next slide. Okay, um, so where do we put fillers now? Well, everywhere. That's the answer, okay? Um, we can, remember those pictures where I showed the bone was starting to deteriorate? Well, we, can, we, can, we can't change that. We can't change the bone, but we can put filler on top of where the bone is, and what that does is it looks exactly as if the bone is still there, okay? So we're always putting filler on top of bone to help that out. Uh, we do eyebrows, a lot of eyebrows with fillers. Really nice way to just enhance this little area, this little lateral third of the eyebrow. Um, gives you a great sense of fullness there. Um, across the nose, cheeks. We do a lot of filling of this cheek hollows that people get as they get older. A lot of work around the chin. We have people who can be in their 40s and everything about them looks young, but you look right here in the center of their mouth and their chin and all their age is there. So we do a lot of work in that area. We do the necks, okay, and um, all kinds of places. Next, uh, next slide. So this is a woman had a liquid facelift. Young woman, again, okay. Here she has this sort of vertical line, verticalizing, okay? And you get her back here, she's got a more of a, of a conical shape to her face, okay? Um, she wasn't that bad to begin with, so it's not super dramatic, because obviously she was young, but this just looks a lot more pleasant as a facial shape than this more vertical kind of shape does. And then of course, she has her lips too, so her lips have a nice brightness to it. And then you see how she had these deeper creases here? So when we put filler here and here, that lifts up the cheeks and makes this whole crease smoother. So people, again, that's an age, that's somewhere something people read age when they look at somebody and they see those deep folds and they say, okay, um, I like mine, I like your blue. Okay. Uh, next slide. So again, we, we use filler everywhere. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Uh, 41 to 50, eh, you got to start fixing at this age, okay? Uh, more lines, more wrinkles, okay? Definite loss of volume, signs of skin sagging, uh, noticeable difference in skin tones that you begin to have. So again, sunscreen, 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 anti-aging products, mainly antioxidants and retinols. Um, this point, we're really talking about doing some tightening type of treatments, okay? Something like Ulthera, which actually tightens the skin, okay? Um, and those are great technology at this point. And then often we're moving into the more aggressive methods of laser that we were talking about earlier. 
Um, when I was talking about my favorite laser, the core laser, where we're doing a little deeper lasering to get some tightening, okay, or we're doing some deeper peels. So that's when we start to get into doing procedures that have some downtime associated with them. But that's what you need sometimes to achieve the benefit. Um, this person had a liquid facelift again. I think she's 49. And um, all we did on her, I think, was a couple of light peels. And then we just simply did some filler. And we really reshaped her entire face. You can see it's dramatic, okay. She went from looking kind of tired, okay, to looking bright. Um, this person is in her early 50s, and we just simply did laser on her, okay. Um, she had a lot of wrinkles, a lot of discoloration, and it just brightened and smoothed her skin up quite nicely. Next slide. Okay. Um, so this is a patient that I showed you before, 49, okay, um, and basically we just mainly did Juvederm in her. Uh, we used Dysport, which is a, another brand of Botox. And uh, it gave her just a tremendous benefit in terms of looking more youthful, dynamic, uh, vital. Okay, a lot of work around her lower mouth because, again, you don't see it when you're looking here, but this is where a lot of her aging is. So when you begin to work on some of these deeper folds and creases and give her a little more fullness, kind of do some filler here to push up the corner of the mouth. Yes, you need. All right, if I finish early, I'll head over you there. You need to continue fixing. Okay, you prevented everything you can. Now there's there's nothing but restoration. That's what you really got to work on. Um, all the things we talked about before are happening to a bigger degree, and at this point, we need to work a little bit harder. Next slide. Okay. Um, and certainly, when you get into your 50s, um, one area that's a real simple, inexpensive fix. It's amazing is just taking care of these little lines, this kind of droopy, droopy corner of your lips, okay? If you are looking for the least expensive improvement that you can achieve in somebody in 50 and older, is a few units of Botox here and here, and it literally just turns the corners of your mouth up, and it suddenly makes you go from looking sad and kind of maybe a little angry and people can't read you, to looking more natural and happy about it. Simple, cheap, easy way to go. And we have a slide, I don't remember if I put a slide in and showed that. Uh, but we did on her. So you can see that she had this kind of droopiness here. And her, her lip is much more horizontal now. So it's just a tiny touch of something that makes a difference. We also did a, a peel on her, and this is a woman again is in her mid-50s. Uh, and I showed her before on my other slide. But you can see how much smoother her skin is and how, how her skin just looks brighter. Um, she also had some other Botox and some fillers in through here, which again makes the face look better compared to where it was previously. We're turning back that clock. Keep in mind, we can only turn that clock back so far. Okay, not mad. Okay, next slide. Um, and this person, again, I showed her earlier. Kind of worn out look around her lips. She really had a lot of wrinkles, okay. Uh, her lips no longer look full. Uh, she had a lot of sagging of the tissue around the cheeks, okay. A lot of vertical wrinkles there. So, again, she had a CO2, uh, actually, she had a GCAP, not a CO2. Um, and a liquid facelift, and again, we gave her skin a great brightening, okay, really looks nice and smooth and youthful, and then by filling her and injecting some fillers around <coughs> these creases, giving her lip a little bit of volume, okay, again, a little bit of Botox here and here, you can see that her lips look much more um, horizontal here, rather than beginning to kind of fall down like they were over there. Little changes, bigger changes, and it all adds up. It's, it's a sum of all, right? Two plus two plus two plus two. And you just keep doing that. Okay, next slide. So this is all therapy. Um, obviously, as we get a little bit older, we start to get some drooping, okay? And this is one session with all therapy on the chin and neck. Um, all therapy is a method of using ultrasound. You know, the same kind of ultrasound they use when you're having a baby, right? And they ultrasound you. Okay, if you take that same kind of ultrasound, but you do use the kind that's used on a submarine, right? Okay? which they, they used to figure out to find out where they are under the water and what's going on elsewhere. Okay, that's all ultrasound. So you use something that's really strong like that on your skin. Um, it's, like, it's like a pinpoint of ultrasound that goes down into the skin, and we set it to go different levels, superficial, deep, medium. Okay, and what it does is it causes little hot spots down in the skin, and those hot spots cause the collagen to contract. And so we get a lot of tightening with that. Okay. How long will that last? You have that that's permanent. That's a permanent change, yeah. So, okay, but everybody continues to age, right? So when we say permanent, it doesn't mean that if you're 55, you're gonna be 55 when you're six. You're still gonna continue to age, but we're turning that clock back, and now we're resetting the clock. So the aging is beginning from here rather than here, but you will still age over time. So when we say permanent, it's a relative permanent, okay? So 
Yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, but we get these very nice results. Again, this is a side view. And often people take a few sessions and results may take two or three months to occur. But if you're talking about a non-surgical approach to really smooth out the neck, okay, to, because you notice it when you walk in, you see somebody who's got like a flabby neck, okay. It's just really noticeable. If you can take their eyes off of that and redirect it to the rest of the face, you've made a dramatic improvement even if they still have some residual wrinkles here. So I would say this is probably 75% improvement compared to the way they were, even though they still have a little bit of droop. And again, really tightened up his jawline, okay, or her jawline, sorry, on this one, and probably another session will really help that, but you can see the lines on her neck have already improved dramatically. So the Althera is an amazing addition to, to treatment as we tend to um, get a little bit saggy. Next slide. Okay. Um, again, our liquid facelifts as in older people. This was a gentleman who was in his late 50s, okay, and simply by doing our injections around his mouth a little bit here, okay, we made him go from looking his age to looking somewhat younger, okay, and again, this was somebody who's in their 50s. Next slide. Okay. So, a lot of us were on the Boomer Express, okay, and who needs treatment? So, we all do, but remember one thing, okay, it's all nuance and balance. That's what I'm talking about. A little here, a little there, kind of oriented exactly for what each individual needs. Some people need treatment for sagging, some people need treatment to restore and lift a little bit. Uh, some people need the surface of their skin. Um, we just pick what you need and we want to make sure it's the right treatment for you. So I think that's it. Okay, oh, I was going to say, we're artists. We shape, smooth, refine, and repair, okay? But even though, even Michelangelo's works are imperfect. And if you come to a doctor or a, or a physician and you say, I'm looking for perfection, you're not being really realistic, okay? You have to look for improvement in where you are and understand that there's a little give and a little get in all of this, okay? So be realistic, okay? And um, it'll be fun. All right.